it's Levi with Obadiahs and today we're going to be changing a heat exchanger on a NTI Trinity 150 boiler. This here that my hands on is what the heat exchanger is and we have our new one here. Just going to show you the whole sides and underside and up and down and everything this whole thing entails. With our new heat exchanger we've got a different top here. You can see on this one it has a band clamp in it and the gasket set up. If you look at the other one here this one doesn't have that same setup. This is just set up with a three inch PVC elbow on it. This one's glued directly to the old cover plate if you can see back in there and mainly the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to label all my wires and go through and just make sure I know where everything goes before you tear it all apart as you can see there's a quite a bit of wiring here so now we got all of our wires labeled and so the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to disconnect our pipe here comes up through the top there into the union into the roof and then we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our fittings from the exchanger you see I got all the valves shut off to everything we'll also I have to remove our pump here so I can get that fitting off the exchanger as well and put on the new one I just use some standard duct tape. Just kind of wrote everything down, make sure I know where it all goes. So now you see I removed the pump here. And I'm getting ready to disconnect all my connections here to the top of the heat exchanger. And I just purged the whole system out and got it completely free of water. So we can get ready to pull this thing off the wall and dismantle this unit uh, okay. on a table. So it's it's a little easier to do it that way instead of trying to do it up top because you have your exhaust here. And in order to get this pipe off, you got to get this to drop down and get everything free and clear from itself. But as you can see, I've just... Pretty well disconnected everything here and just want to show you that it's pretty, pretty, pretty quick setup. It's actually got just a couple for your, for your water pipes here that, uh, that just set up into your smaller exchanger under there. And, you know, like I said, it's just a couple of connections. It's this one here, this one here, and. This one's going to be a little more of a bear, as you can see, if you follow this over. See, it comes down, and there's really not a whole lot of room to work with this, so I think that what we're going to do is we're just going to keep this on here until we get everything completely disconnected. And this PEX pipe here, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to file this clamp off and pull this apart and so we can get this to spin off the other side of the exchanger here. So... So as you can see here, just got everything all disconnected from the heat exchanger. Got our pump removed. Got our domestic hot water outline removed. And got our other valve here removed. And as you can see there's everything's pretty well disconnected. Came down here and disconnected our gas line so it looks like a couple of minor things here just the mounting hardware it's like six bolts we're gonna go ahead and just pull those off and remove the whole unit off the wall here and as you can see everything's all disconnected I just kind of hung my electrical up here just get it out of the way for now and uh, 
now when we get this thing dropped out and like I said before the exhaust is going to come it's just going to drop right out and you don't want to do this just by yourself this thing's heavy if you're going to pull it off the wall you're going to fix it on the bench you should probably get some help looks like we're ready to pull it off the wall now this is Woody from Obadiah's and we are working on the NTI boiler that's where it used to be right there the plumbing is disconnected and there she be and what we're doing now is changing out the heat exchanger which is this deal here there's really no way to tell you how to do this other than trick is to try to take stuff apart without taking too much stuff apart you just want to take apart what you need to take apart this unit was used for training by NTI early on um, the initial factory rep had uh, they had taken it apart at um, the distributors and then put it all back together to show them how to service it so NTI was nice enough to send us a new heat exchanger under warranty. So we're being nice enough to video this for them and you. Show you how this all comes apart and how to put it all back together. So now as you can see, we got the old heat exchanger out. And I'm going to go through and do a little detailing on the wiring. And get everything tied back up where it needs to be. This would be a good time to get in here and really inspect everything and just take a look at your structure and make sure you don't have any cracks or breaks in anything. And take a look at your bottom exchanger there. Make sure there's nothing broken, nothing loose. And we got our old exchanger here. And we got our new one here. And the nice thing that NTI did was, as what he said before, they gave us everything we need. They gave us a new igniter cable, all new igniters, all new sensors, everything, so we don't have to worry about using all the old stuff again. So we just got the new heat exchanger in. And it was uh, pretty well like doing heart surgery and to pull everything down and get everything cleaned up and replace it with the new one here. So I'm just kind of working on some electrical and getting some of the connections tied up here and got everything reinstalled. Just kind of see what we did here just Went through and replaced all the switches and everything. Just kind of made this thing like a brand new boiler again. You see, we got all of our condensation drains all hooked back up and got everything sitting pretty good. So we just got our exhaust reinstalled and have the boiler running now after going back through and getting everything all remounted. You can see all of our connections are locked and secured. No leaks, no drips. The other thing I want to note too about this system is that you really, really, really I can't stress it enough, you've got to make sure this pump's working because if this pump's not working, you're not getting any hot water when your domestic hot water is called. So, these things have a tendency sometimes to lock themselves up, so you actually have to pull the pump out, pull the impeller out, and free it with your hand. So. But other than that, it's working good. And it's cycling as you can see. Everything.
everything's all hooked back up and it's working.